I truly believe that he is unro unraveling the scrolls. I believe that um, that there is a level of knowledge that's increasing. I believe that this knowledge, though, and this is just my personal opinion, this mm -hmm. knowledge is increasing in people that we would not have believed it would have come from. Well, I want to welcome everybody to the conversation tonight. My name is, of course, Daryl Arnez, and I am with Emergent Ministries. And I am excited that you're joining with us this evening. We have uh, someone very uh, special and someone very dear to me. I met um, this young lady a couple of years ago on another platform. And over the years, we've just kind of um, really connected, discuss some things, bounce things off of one another, um, which I believe is really important for the people of God. Um, and so this evening, I do want, um, I do want you to just kind of sit back, relax, grab, grab your Bible, grab a, 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 a pop or something. Most of all, grab a notebook, and a pencil, because you're going to want to take notes. But uh, we are being joined tonight um, by Minister Cha. I just call him Minister Cha. And uh, in just a few moments, she is going to introduce um, herself to you. And then we're just going to go from there. But again, I want to welcome everybody to the conversation. I want to encourage you to please like, share, and subscribe to this channel so that you can be abreast of the various content that has been uploaded and continues to be uploaded because it's all for your spiritual growth, uh, development, and enrichment. Well, before we go any further, let's just have a word of prayer and let's thank God for his presence and let's welcome and receive the presence of the Holy Spirit, who is the teacher. So having said that, let's just have a word of prayer. Father. We thank you so much for grace. We thank you so much that in your wisdom and in your knowledge, you've given us the opportunity to be a part of uh, the people of God, your people, the people of the book at this time in history. And we are so thankful and so grateful. And as we enter into this conversation, Lord, just let the spirit of wisdom and revelation be present, let it flow both through myself and Minister Cha, and let that same spirit give understanding and insight to the listeners. And Father, we thank you for it. Because of the blood of the covenant of Jesus, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, Minister Cha, I want to welcome you to More Sure Word. And why don't you just take a couple of moments, introduce yourself and Tell the listeners a little bit about your journey, and then we will springboard from there. You know how we do. <laughs> and I am actually humbled, you know, because I feel like I am being um, <laughs> called upon by my mentor. And, uh, and, and I, I take that, that phrase very lightly because uh, I, I truly feel like I have been pruned and developed by you. Uh, well, I'm truly humbled uh, because a lot of what I have learned in my growth, it has come from you. It has come from your ministry and what God is doing uh, in and through you. So with that, I am truly humbled. I am forever grateful. Um, I don't have the words, you know, it's just kind of like, oh, I'm starstruck. It's like I'm meeting my Denzel. <laughs> Oh, oh, shoot, come on. It's like I'm meeting my Denzel. Um, it's like I am, I'm, I'm in awe because uh, it, and this is probably a moment where I shouldn't be as nervous as I am, but I am truly nervous because it's like, oh my God, what do I say to Brother Darrell? It's no differently than what you say on the phone, fool. Uh, but at the right. same time, it, it, it's like, it, it's a humbling experience. Um, for most who do not know me, uh, I have a 20 plus year journey in ministry. Uh, started out, uh, of course, uh, Baptist, 
well, no, 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 let's take it back, Pentecostal. Uh, and I, I love to jokingly say that I am Pentabaptikogic because it's like I have a whole <laughs> bunch of it. Well, uh, started my ministerial journey at uh, a CME church. And uh, in that church, it was, you, you know, it's one of those humbling experiences where God says, hey, look, I'm going to try you on this level. And then if you can progress at this level, then we'll move you to that level. And in the course of that, uh, I actually began listening to early T.D. Jakes ministries. And this was like mm. that when E.V. Hill and, and G.E. Patterson and those guys were on. And, and I remember coming home every Sunday after service and I would be glued to the TV to these figures, uh, the Gaithers and all of them. And it was something about his ministry, but at the same time, had no idea that he was here in the Dallas area. And wow. uh, this so happened that one of the girls that I worked with, uh, she said, hey, you want to go to church with me? I ended up going to church with her. We ended up going when he was doing three services on Sunday. We ended up going okay. to the very last service. And from there, it's just like my entire uh, substratum of of the Bible, it changed. This was early mm -hmm. Bishop Jakes, and yeah, uh, yeah. I remember I, I remained under his ministry twenty years, twenty wow. years, and um, I gotta say it was life changing. Uh, I, I tell anybody I will never ever ever take anything from from his ministry what I learned uh, because it was the uh, absolute best time of my life of ministry but it also opened my eyes to a lot of uh i want to say uh you know the the paradigms in ministry so i right. began to see a lot of things and um from there i i just evolved um i, I started out um youth ministry children ministry uh ushers uh street evangelism i did a lot of wow. things uh, uh, went from there and then finally it was like okay let me go ahead and try to get this ordination thing together and that's that's where I am now and uh, okay my whole thing is you know just God wherever you see fit put me plant me do what we got to do I ain't into it for the title you know that I'm, I'm right right very transparent very transparent um and from there, I have birthed a minute with the ministry, which is my own brand, my own title. Um, and I, I'm just rocking and rolling from there. Just whatever God says to do. Okay. Okay. That that's that's interesting. Um, that you've been involved in 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 so many different faith communities, um, which, which is pretty important because it helps us to stay well rounded. Um, and and that's one of the things I think when we first started talking, um, always I always appreciated about you because you know you understand that process, um, and coming out of early um, TD Jakes um, says a lot, you know, in terms of that's where you were really groomed and nurtured and developed, um, because a lot of times ministries like that tend to get. Um, a very bad rap in the latter end, and and they don't get to understand. A lot of people don't get to understand the early days of those ministries and and how he has really poured um, into people's lives, despite um, some of the negative press um, that tends to surround ministries of that caliber. You know, currently. Um, but there is something that I do have to ask, and I mentioned it right before we went live, um, because even today, um, there there's still a there's still a degree of controversy um, surrounding women um, in ministry. Um, so I guess the first question that I want to ask is which is kind of self, it's going to be a self-answerable question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, did you encounter a lot of opposition to your, your ministry because of being female? And then the second part is, how did you process through it? 
I did and I still do. And, oh. and, that, and that, that sums it up. Uh, a lot of it is, I want to say that it, it is blatant misinterpretation of the Bible and the scripture. Uh, because I am one that truly believes that scripture interprets scripture. You know, mm -hmm. God said what he said and he you don't need any hot sauce on what he said, you know. Right. That's how I'm going to put it. You don't need no hot sauce on what he said. He done fried the chicken and here it is. You got to eat it like it is. Uh, right. whether, you know, whether, however you want to put it. Uh, but I have had quite a bit of, of uh, pushback in ministry um, from, from so many different people. And, and, and it, it, it bothered me a bit to where I, I can honestly say that I began to question uh, hmm. um, my walk early on because I'm like, okay, God, did you really call me to this? Because in the beginning, if you do not, um, I, I want to say if you don't have the, the foundation, th that solidity with God, that foundation, mm -hmm. then it is, it is so easily uh, uh, for one to become swayed away from what God has truly called you to do. So a lot of times, especially for me, it was like, okay, well, you, you, you sister, you didn't, you didn't hear what he said. No, I, I thought he said when he was with the woman at the well, you know, she went and evangelized uh, mm -hmm. with the two that came to the tomb. They went and they evangelized. So how is it that you can tell me that God didn't call me? And they always go back to 1 Timothy 2 and 11. Well, the woman ought to keep silent in the church. Well, no, that was for that particular time and culture. Right. And right. so that, that's part of what I can say that I, I holistically credit Bishop Jakes for because he said, no, you have to go back and study the culture and the yes. time for which the Bible was written. And if you don't take yourself out of where I am, Dallas, Texas, if you don't take yourself out of Dallas and put yourself right over there in Israel, mm -hmm. Never get or fully comprehend what he's saying. That's so it, it it took a lot. It, it took a lot for me uh, uh, as a female, as a woman, because a, a lot of times you will come into arenas, and and I'm telling you, men will just complete. It's the men that shut you down. Now the sisters, <laughs> sisters gonna run all around the church. They gonna snatch off their wigs and eyelashes. They don't want right. But right. The men they have completely shut you down until you you hit that I, I call it that B flat chord. When you hit that, you know, the hook a book chord, then they all right. over the place. So that that was it I, I wanna say it has truly been a challenge over the twenty years, but it has one that um I would say by God's grace I've learned to navigate and overcome. Okay. 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 Cause, Cause, I often tell people, I said, well, if 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 you really want to understand um, the importance, not just of every member in the body, but if you really want to understand the importance of our sisters um, in the faith, mm -hmm. um, do some do some studying and some reading in church history, um, and you don't have to go that far back. If you just look at um, let's just say the church in America, um, many of our churches would not have survived had it not been for the female presence. And I'm not just talking about, you know, yeah, because they cook the Sunday dinners and all of that. No, I'm actually talking about when it comes to the ministry of the word, um, really being able to hear from God. And, 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 and I think a lot of people might miss that. Um, women tend to have this really keen sense of being able to hear things, um, spiritually speaking, that men may not. Um, we know this from the book of Genesis, you know, people kind of take a twisted view of that. But, you know, the enemy didn't go to Adam, the enemy went to the woman, you know, she was real keen uh, to hear things, um, spiritually speaking, and, and they never lost that, you know, they, they never lost that. Um, but then at the same time, you do understand order and, and as they like to say, protocol and all of that good stuff that they tend to heap on us. So, you know, I just wanted to, to, to kind of throw that in. 
Um, but 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 for a lot, but for females who may be struggling with being sure they're hearing the voice of God, and I know you're big on that one, you know, because you spend a lot of time with God, right? Um, what 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 major keys would you give to them first, the women, and then to all of us? Um, in general, when it really comes to to really hearing the voice of God and knowing that it's God, I'm not talking about the woo woo stuff, but you know, really hearing the voice of God and knowing that you're hearing God. What kind of what what can you share with us? For me personally, it was shutting down other voices. Ooh. So, in, in order for you to hear from God, I got to shut out all this clutter from everybody else. Uh, because a lot of times uh, when, when we say that we hear from God, that hearing from God is actually convoluted by what we've heard from our pastor, what we've heard Ooh. from the prophet, what we've heard from this person in, in today's culture, what we've heard from social media. So a lot of my personal hearing from God, it, it tends to come in the late nine hours where it's completely quiet in the house. I don't okay. Need anybody else but me and him. It ain't a thud in the night, a cat crawling, or any of that. It's just, <laughs> it's just completely me and God. And then from there, it's just that reassurance. Okay, God. And this is me, God. If it's you, every time I give that, if it's you, He always points me back to Scripture. So wow. that's, I know that it's Him. Because if, if, you, as we say in the, in the world, if, if is a fifth, we'd all be drunk. Well, here it is. If, if, right. Bible, we go all be full of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So he gives me that when I go back and I say, okay, God, listen, am I hearing from you? And it, it's so simple as, okay, get up. I will get up in the middle of the night. I am walking the floor. And then I come and I can open the Bible and it's like, boom, here it is. And he's mm. speaking to me directly from the text. I don't have to call anybody. I don't have to lean on anybody. It's just me and him. And that's part of the intimacy. And that's okay. one of the things that I, I challenge. Um, I often challenge um, a lot of people with um, when, when they say, you know, hey, Minister Child, how do you know that you're hearing from God? Well, are you intimate with him? Because here's the thing, when you make love to a person, you hear that person. I, right. I know everything, you know, I can feel it's rhythmic. So if we are not in tune with each other, how can we make love to one, uh, one another? And right. that's what I, I, I tend to tell people, you know, you have to have that relationship and not a relationship with God, Ooh, which is yes. where we are today in this culture, this climate is there, there's a lot of religionship. There's no mm -hmm. relationship. A, a, a lot of people, they have a form of godliness and the Bible talks about that. Yes, yeah, ab ab absolutely. So, so, so in your hearing, um, because I know typically what ends up happening is either God will put you on my heart or vice versa. And then we'll end up calling and talking, right? And then you're always like, Brother Daryl, I can't get <laughs> out of, and then you start telling me the book, right? <laughs> God keeps taking you back to the book. He keeps taking you back to certain, you know, certain books in the scripture, um, certain uh, uh, um, people in the scripture God may have you looking at. So in, in, in the, the climate of today's church world, um, what book does God have you in? What's he What's he dealing with you about? <laughs> oh my! We right now, he and I are actually sitting in the Book of Kings, and um, I, I keep asking him, God, why the Book of Kings for now? And mm -hmm. every time I ask him why the Book of Kings for now, it's because, and this is what he keeps telling me. My prophets are in a cave. I need them Ooh. to come out of the cave and get on the forefront. Mm -hmm. I need them to come out of hiding because there is a storm on the horizon. 
um, I, 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 and I, I kind of shied away from this Jesus Christ. I kind of, I kind of <laughs> shied away from this today. Um, I actually was about to post this, you know, hey, I understand that it is October the 29th and I understand that we are coming upon this whole political climate or whatever, you know, everybody vote right. for they want to vote for. But at the end of the day, it's not about a donkey. It's not mm -hmm. about an elephant. But if you are not looking to the lamb of God, right. we have missed the entire thing. It's not about who's in the White House. We need to be promoting kingdom. And that's that good. the whole thing. Uh, uh, I wanted to put that, out, but you, you know, and I said, God, I'm gonna put it out, which me, because I, I, me and him, we had this dual thing, and I, I can be a little hard right. at times. <laughs> God, I'm gonna put it out there. I'm gonna put it out there because I have been known to put stuff out there that kind of tips, and I don't give a care if they block me. I, I really don't. I don't give a care if they take me down. I, I am big to say that they can cancel culture, but they cannot cancel kingdom. So right, they, exactly. can whatever, they can do whatever they want to do. Uh, but if God is calling me to it, if he's telling me to, you know, hey, this is what I'm telling you in the midnight hour. These are the things that I want you to get out there. Then I need you to do it because, you know, we are all we're called to be watchmen, you know. And at the end of the day, it's it's not about, you know, if, if CNN disagrees, it's not about if Fox disagrees, it's not about if, you know, Jamie Foxx disagrees or Kanye or any of these folks here. We have to do what God is telling us to do as a body of believers. And that's where, you know, I've said it so for, for years. I said, you know, hey, it's too much ho Hollywood and not enough holy word. You mm -hmm. know, uh, everybody's trying to come up and be the next, but nobody is trying to be the voice. Ooh. Nobody is trying to be that voice that God is calling them to be and do the things that God is calling them to do. And that is to deter, you know, this nation away from the destruction that's coming. I don't give a care what they say. I truly believe that the book of Daniel is crying aloud from the corpse. I believe Daniel is calling aloud. I believe that Revelation is calling aloud. I, I believe mm -hmm. this is speaking to us in these days. And people, they just don't understand it. They, they either, either they understand it and comprehend it or they just turn in a, a deaf ear to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's true. And, and kind of, as you know, those are like two of my favorite books, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Daniel and Revelation. Um, because I, I do believe that that's where we are. Mm -hmm. Um you know, that's where we are in, in, in prophetic time. Mm -hmm. And, and so ha having said that, I want to read a verse out of Daniel and, and then I just want you to speak to it. Right. Um, and that is in Daniel 12, there's this statement that's made Daniel, um, had, you know, seen all of these visions and talks about Michael standing up, many of them sleeping in the earth. Um, those that be wise are going to shine as the brightness of the firmament. Uh, they that turn many to righteousness as the stars are forever. But it's verse four, and it, it says, but you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge will be increased. That's a very powerful verse of scripture, right? Do you think that we're in that time where the book, those aspects of the book that were sealed are being opened? And this, when, when you mentioned the prophets coming out of the cave, um, do you think that, there, that there's any connection in between that, that what the, these prophets are hearing, they, they've been hearing in the cave, but it has to do with these things prophetically out of Daniel um, that they may be reluctant to come out and speak? I absolutely do. I absolutely do. Um, it, it, it takes me back to earlier Daniel with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, we truly are living in times where people are torn between 
bowing for God Ooh. and bowing for mammon. And mm -hmm. uh, a, a lot of people are torn because it's like, okay, you, you know, and we've seen this, especially with this whole pandemic breakout uh, mm -hmm. over the past couple of years. And then we've seen this upheaval with uh, the politics and lawlessness in the street. And it's like, okay, God, I got to, I got to feed my family. So, you know, it's, it's kind of like, I'm going to take a knee over here, but I'm going to stand up over here. And it's like, you know, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm calling you to increase in this knowledge uh, because right. I've already laid the foundation. I've already said what will be. You can't waver or halt in between opinions. You either hot or you're cold. And right now, I truly believe that what we are seeing is this unraveling of the scrolls. I also believe mm. that what we are seeing is a lot of people that once said that they would stand for God. They said they would mm. stand for God. They are mm -hmm. standing without God. Wow. You know, it's how much can, how much <laughs> God can I tolerate? Uh, because here's the thing. I, I truly believe that right now we are being like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We we only we just we just enter the oven, if that yeah. makes any sense. We just we just got one toe in the oven. We ain't right. even in the middle of the brickstone. But then when we get in the brickstone, who can truly stand and say, "Okay, God, I'm still here with you. I'm still right. believing." I'm still walking. I'm still trusting. Uh, God, yes, I yes. believe in you. Uh, I will not falter. I will not bow. Not many can do that because guess what? They are going to look back. They are going to look just like in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. They're going to look back and they're going to say, whoa, whoa, I'm leaving my Bentley. I'm leaving my Benz. I'm leaving my church, my, my brick and mortar. I'm leaving all of this. And God is saying, whoa, 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 slow your roll. This ain't mm -hmm. what you said. You told me you were all in this for me. And now you're telling me that you're all in for stuff. I truly believe that he is unro unraveling the scrolls. I believe that, um, that there is a level of knowledge that's increasing. I believe that this knowledge, though, and this is just my personal opinion, this mm -hmm. knowledge is increasing in people that we would not have believed it would have come from because we have looked at some of the giants to be, you know, these megas to, to be the ones that would unravel this knowledge. And they are, they're, they're doing a, okay, child, say it. They're doing a piss poor job of it. They, they, right. They're just not doing it. You, you know, it's, it's like, whoa, wait a minute. You know, it, especially if you know the scripture, um, um, but it's like there, it's like there's this compromise and you can see it, feel it, touch it, taste it. And if mm -hmm. you are following them to a certain degree, then it's like, okay, God, wait a minute. I can't trust these cats no more. I got to stray away from them and that, okay. Yeah. Cause we're going to touch this in a minute. That's the reason why some of the stuff like brothers, like Kanye West, mm -hmm seems a little bit more credible than they want you to believe. It's because right. he's traveling some things and he is not a familiar voice. Now, is he 100% correct? No, he's not. But then mm -hmm. he is touching onto some stuff uh, right. that is, that's unraveling. And it's like God is saying, look, I'm sending you one. I'm sending you one. Wow. Wow. That, that's, that's interesting. Um, because even as you were talking about that, I, people, people are going to be like, oh, boy, Daryl, boy, Daryl stretching tonight. But <laughs> I was thinking about who, who came to mind was John the Baptist, right? John was not a voice that he was not a person that you would think the voice would come from. I mean, you had the Sanhedrin, you had the big boys, you know, those are all the guys that make the conferences. Right. So so you had all of them. You had, you know, Pharisees, you had the Sadducees, you had the zealots over here. They ready to kill everybody to get free. You know, you had you had all of these different groups. But here's this guy, John the Baptist, 
who's like out in the wilderness, you know, and they say, yeah, we think, yeah, we remember when he was born, but we kind of really haven't seen him around much. And he's out in the wilderness. Everybody probably thought, watch this. Everybody probably thought he was crazy, right? You know, he come in looking all crazy, you know, <laughs> with a message, you know, with, with, with a message that most people were probably like, where's this brother coming from? You know, where's this brother coming from? That ain't what the religious leader's been teaching us all these years. You know, and, and because I look at the, I look at the Kanye situation kind of similar. Now, let me say this, folks, because you, I got to say this, Chuck, because you know how people get. I'm not saying Kanye West is the prophet. <laughs> that's, not what, that's not what I'm saying. That's not what she's saying. I don't think, no. <laughs> that's not what she's saying, right? But I will say this. Like John the Baptist, he was willing to confront the hypocrisy that's going right. on today. And that's right. what I love about him because he, yes. you know, it's like, whoa. I'm going to lay it out here on the table. You know, he folded his his aces, his spades and everything, and he just put them on the table. And it is what it is. Exactly. Exactly. And, and, and I think that's the thing about prophetic words. A lot of times we may miss because we're looking for the prophetic word. Yea, verily, verily, I, the Lord, thy God, would say to you today, you know, and this is generally in our church services, right? Um, but 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 you look at what he said, much of much of which I agree with. Uh, but you look at what he said, and it has literally shaken um, in in a very little time. It's it's literally shaken um, a lot of industries. It's it's literally upset our culture to where now we have to have the conversation about what he's saying. Whereas before there, there may have been, um, I'll be totally transparent. There may be those of us who understood what, you know, understood that dynamic of what he's saying about people groups, about in the industry, the music industry, radio industry, and all of that. I'm out of that industry. And I think we may have talked about it a little bit in mm -hmm. the past. So I kind of have a little bit of insight um, into how that industry actually works. And he's dead. He's, <laughs> he's dead on target about it because we live in this system, right? Um, you may reference back to Shadrach, Meshach, and you know how I say it, Shadrach, Meshach, and that bad Negro, right? <laughs> um, you know, in Babylon. And this is the uh -huh. exact thing that, mm -hmm. that scripture talked about in Revelation 17, 18, about Babylon. Babylon is falling. And we as the people of God, as you pointed out, we as the people of God are being called upon to decide who our allegiance is going to be to. Are we, are we going to bow or are we going to burn? You know, that's what they were faced with. You're either going to bow to the powers that be or you're going in the fire, okay? Well, nothing is different for us today. We're either going to bow to the systems of the world or by their threat, we're going to go into the fire. But we already know that there's somebody in the fire before we even get there. So that shouldn't be, that shouldn't be a big deal, right? Um, so, 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 do you do you in your area? Because I think you're in school too, right? Mm -hmm. In Dallas, mm -hmm. okay. Because um, I know Dallas is a really interesting place mm -hmm. <laughs> when it comes to scripture. You know, you're right in the Bible Belt. Um, so, do you see a lot of I'm going to call it spiritual angst um, among a lot of people that you interact with, or does it seem like the church is still just like sound asleep. What are you seeing in your area? A combination. And I really okay. say uh, the spiritual angst is like at a 48. And then it's everybody else is at, you know, 52%. Um, okay. And I've said this before, and, and I want to go back because you said something, they will either bow or burn. You know, I'm going to post that uh, because I like that. I like that you're going to burn it. 
Um, mm-hmm. But but a lot a, a lot of of what I have seen personally is is um, and I want to say that a lot of us we we started to sound the alarm and uh, Lord you know you and I we met back on uh, Periscope. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the messages that I dropped on Periscope, I never understood why mm. God had me dropping them, like being lured out of the foxhole. Uh, um, so many different ones. And I, I was- I able, remember them. <laughs> I thank God that I was able to get them and extract them before they did away with the platform. But a lot of it now, I, I didn't understand it then, but now we are there. And it's like, okay, God, listen, you gave me, um, you spoke through me yes. to give them warning. Uh, you know, from the one that I did on hybrid fruit, uh, compromising, hybrid fruit, uh, uh, first responders. You know, this is where we are now. Mm-hmm. A, a lot of people don't clearly understand it. I, I, I truly believe that... Um, I, for me, I have to say that I truly believe that a lot are still lost in the conference realm. Uh, mm. I, I like to call it a hook above realm. You know, let's 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 sow and get the, the prophets to say what we want them to say, and that right. kind of ties back into John the Baptist, and then even with you know Kanye West. You know, he's coming out. He's a voice in the wilderness that the wild doesn't comprehend. Right. So that's something with him because he's saying some stuff that is completely foreign to the ears of those that are listening. It's, it's kind of like, you, you know, I, I, I said this so many times before in, in different uh, messages that I gave. It's kind of like if you're a parent, a mom, and you're trying to wean your baby off of breast milk, you have to chew that food up for him and give it to him. And then if they don't mm. understand it, they spit it back out. And then you have to give it back to them again. And, and that's where we are now. It's like God is saying, hey, look, I'm chewing this up for you. And I'm putting it in your mouth so that you can taste, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And see, that's the thing. A lot of people are tasting, but they haven't opened their eyes to see that God is good. And this oh, wow. is where we are. You know, that's the word, taste and see. You got to put it in your mouth and then open your eyes. And when I opened my eyes, I said, okay, okay, this is a good person. I love what I'm getting now. But a lot of people are tasting and they're still dumbfounded and blind. I said, Mm. I ain't taking it back. They are (laughs) dumbfounded and they are blind uh, because we are truly in a day where I believe that we have enough voices that are crying out. And it's because it's not coming from their favorite celebrity preacher that they right. can't comprehend nor receive the word that is given. So if they hear from Brother Daryl, they don't like it. If they hear from Minister Cha, oh, she's just, you, you know, she's flashy, heresy, she's a heretic, you know. But if somebody else come out here with three and a half million followers say it, oh, it's the yep. truth. And then here they are lying, you know, just going to fan the flames of their flesh they completely going to hell everybody on their way burn it yeah and yeah that, that's the way that i see um the time and the culture that we're in um it, it, it is truly one where um I, I i was up one night and i said god what is media m-e-d-i-a man's evil design and action Ooh. Me. Wait a minute, I gotta write. Wait a minute, I gotta write that one down. Go ahead. <laughs> Man's evil design in action. And, and it's wow. like you can be out here on these platforms and you're doing this and you're doing that, but at the end of the day, this is who a lot a lot of people bow to. This is yeah. who a lot of people bow to. And I'm watching it daily, uh um especially in politics and government, in entertainment industry, anytime you come out from among them, you know, because the Bible tells us to come out from among them, be ye separate, you know, and you have to stop and say, okay, God, who is the them? You know, Mm -hmm. who who are the them that you are telling me to come out from among them? Once you identify who the, whom they are and you come out, there's always going to be a problem. There's always a problem. 
that's that's very true. That that is that is so true. Um, because I, I was even thinking, and that's why when you said when, when you said the thing about media, I said, wait, let me write that down. Uh <laughs> because uh-huh. I'm getting ready to go back and talk about I did some of it when I was on Periscope. I haven't done a lot of it since I've been on YouTube, but really dealing with um what happened with black radio and urban radio. Um and when you said that, it it just brought to mind how I watched um, and how I've read about how, you know, certain power groups came in and literally deconstructed um, urban media, right? Urban radio, broadcast, newsprint, everything else. And then I turn around and I look today at the individuals that have been put in place and I'm kind of like, okay, what's interesting, and I just I just thought about it again, is a lot of our top urban radio broadcasters, they're actually comedians in their career, you know, and, and I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> You know, what, what's wrong with this picture here, right? Where, whereas before, a lot of the individuals, especially in the pioneering area, you know, era, um, you know, talking late, late 40s, during the 50s, 60s, you know, because I tell people that the civil rights movement to a great degree owes a lot to the urban radio broadcasters because they're the ones that were actually keeping what was going on in front of the eyes of the masses. You know, um, they were the ones, you know, setting up a lot of the rallies when Dr. King and others were going out. It it, it was your urban radio personalities. And they literally, though the powers that be, literally came in, deconstructed it, reconstructed it, bought it out, that's why they're corporate owned now. Mm-hmm. And then they put comedians in. And I'm not saying anything against Steve Harvey and any of these individuals. I'm just making a point. They, they put comedians in who, you know, I mean, they have, you know, perspectives and everything as well. But I mean, come on now. You know, how similar is to how similar is that to what was done, say, in like the slavery era? You know, they put certain people in that they could pretty much control, manipulate and give them a better way of life. But in the meantime, a lot of the information that ought to be coming to us, it's not coming because it's all coming through one media outlet. You know, and, and you know, I find that to be very interesting. So you you got to watch what you say. <laughs> you can't you can't say certain trigger words. You can't say this or they'll just take you down. You know, I mean, it's, it's it's really interesting. I said this was going to be the, the show for you and me both. They got banned tonight. So we're <laughs> going to hash this one out. So it's, it's kind of like, um, I, I used to listen to Ricky Smiley a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, on mornings when I used to have to get up and go to work early in the morning. And he would always start off with a quote unquote gospel sentence. And okay. he would say a song, three songs at the most. And you know, we're gonna pray and then we're gonna get into whatever it is that we're doing for the day. Right. After an hour or two hours into it, he would have a preacher come in and drop an inspirational word. Mm-hmm. And then this is inspirational word was enough to get you thinking, just just enough of thinking. It was almost like a car that was sitting on a quarter tank of gas. It's enough to get you to the gas station, but not enough to get you beyond that point. Okay. <laughs> just enough. Just enough. And then it's it's like God said, Hey, are you listening to what's going on? Mm-hmm. I truly was not paying attention to what was going on because even with them and their celebrity status, a lot of it was media indoctrination. Right. Which mm-hmm. is, you know, man's evil design indoctrinated action. Uh, right. Because a lot of it has, 
it's it's a lot. Okay, you have this platform, you have this power, you have this position. Go say and say, do this. And if you say it, they will bow to it, and right. they will do what you say. And then for for people who do not have that realm to think outside of that scope and that fear, that sphere, you know, you you accept what's what's being fed to you. I, I saw this. Um, my daughter actually said this to me a couple of weeks ago, and a little thing she had on saw on TikTok. Well, they were these ladies were at this barbecue, and and the lady had a plate, and it was a full plate. And she said, why are you eating that? She says, because they gave it to me. Right when mm. she said it hit me. You're eating it because they gave it to you. What happens when you stop eating what they're feeding you? Mm-hmm. It's, not, it's not deprivation because back over here on the grill and the buffet, you got all the food here. You can pick and choose what you want, but you right. ate what they gave you. That did something to my entire spirit because I said, this is where we mm. have uh, um, holistically with, with, with radio, with church, with all of it. We have eaten what they have given us for years. We have been told that, you know, a true move of God is when you run around the church and be flat hit you and you hook a book and then you got to dance and, you know, all this. No, that's, that's not. That's church right. psychiatrics. And and, right. and been told that as long as you speak in tongues, you know, no, 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 that's not because that's actually <laughs> out of order. That's not what the Bible said. That is not right. what the Bible said. You're supposed to do it when somebody that is in terror, make sure you ain't calling out no chants and enchantments and put the whole <laughs> curse across the church. <laughs> but don't nobody want to address I love it. this. Nobody wants to address this. So it is with the media. And a lot of it, when I, I think it was uh, uh Ricky Smiley, he has uh you know a couple people on his staff that are you know LGBTQ LMNOP all of that their business, and, right. and here's the thing: you like it, I don't have to love it. Mm-hmm. If this is what y'all are doing, so be it. But do not tie God into that. Don't right. tie God into that. And don't try to force feed me and tell me that God is okay with this lifestyle because that's not what the Bible said. There's a lot of misinterpretation over yes. how, you know, that, well, he only mentioned it four times in the Bible. No, but Jesus Christ was for certain them four or five times that he said, <laughs> you ain't going to do this in the Bible. But right. then if you guys are with an entire platform promoting what God is demoting. You are celebrating the very thing that God will not tolerate. And that that's what bothered me with a lot of where we are in media. It's a lot of whitewashing, brainwashing. It's a lot mm-hmm. of it. And and for for us, you know, it's kind of like the, the whole video with the ladies sitting down at the barbecue. You just eating it because they put it on your plate. You don't wow. have to eat it. You do yeah. not, you don't have to eat it just because it's on your plate. You can, I don't want that. And you can go yeah. get what you need to sustain you. And this is where the body of Christ is as a whole. They have been force fed a lot of stuff that is not in the word of God. And they are eating from what somebody else has fixed for them. And then right. in eating that, they have become spiritually obese. They are spiritually mm. diabetic, spiritually with hypertension. We have a whole, and that is not of God. That's not of no, God. No, it's not. It's not. And, and, and <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm kind of like, that's why I'm always in trouble, right? <laughs> because, <laughs> because I'm trying to tell people. I understand that's what you're eating. But what I'm trying to tell you is this. <laughs> you don't have to keep eating it. You do there's not. Other, there's, there's other food. So learn how to feed yourself. And then what, what inevitably ends up happening, and this, this, this is kind of going to springboard in, into somewhere else. But what, it, what ends up happening is people have been conditioned to believe that the gatekeepers 
know best, right? Even within the church, the gatekeepers know best. Um, so, so then it becomes, well, you know, we know they know because they've been to seminary. They know they know. Now, I'm a seminary grad. I don't have nothing against school because that's the next place we're going to talk about. But... <laughs> And I'm there. <laughs> you know, but but the reality of the matter is not everything that they give us to eat in schools of, of, of academia is true because that's what they're serving up, right? So with you being in, in, in seminary now, I'm sure that there's probably been some stuff that they put on your plate and you like... Uh-uh, there's poison in that. <laughs> but 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 so, so how do how do you actually even pursue what I'm going to call higher education because that's what it is. Okay. So how do you pursue higher education and not allow the food they give you to dilute the food? God's given you at the same time. You, you understand my question or you want me to rephrase it? Because no, I talk I really you. weird, right? Okay. Got you. But I, I want to circle back to something because you called it seminary and I'm learning to call it the cemetery. <laughs> Literally a break. And one of the things that you have to look at with seminary, and, and here's my thought process is every time I think about seminary, I go back to Hoffman and Phineas in 1 Samuel at a place of gluttony mm -hmm. at a place because they they're they're putting everything on your plate and you have all of this fame and you have all the lights cameras action and if you do what i say and this that and the other you're gonna be here you're gonna do this you're gonna do that but at the end of the day they lost it all they lost mm -hmm. every bit of it so for me it, it's a matter of shutting it down it's it's a matter okay. of down and then it's also having a personal relationship with God and and that's what I suggest to a lot of people I, I tell people that all the time I have people call, reach out to me all the time Mr. John pray for me have you prayed for yourself and I mean that might seem a bit harsh but before right. you come to me have you done it with him first? Because if not, I kind of look at myself in this position. If you're coming to me before you're coming to him, you are esteeming me as an idol. I don't want to be your idol. Wow. I do not want to be your idol. I, I'm not here for it. I, I need you to get out of my face, get out of my inbox first, and then go back to him. And then if mm -hmm. he tells you to come to me, if he right. lays on your heart, um, then come and talk to me. But that, that's a problem, a whole issue in itself is because a lot of people, and I posted this today, is that, that we got a lot of ear tickling out there. And so people don't have that to where they can hear from God and have a heart after God, which is no matter what, this is what I love about David. No matter what David did, David circled back around to God. That's no, right. matter what, no matter what this culture do, they do in their whole thing they don't circle back around to god when they mess up they go and mess up even more mm -hmm. right. <laughs> they go back it, to yeah. the source and and that's the thing uh uh for me is is a lot of of what i look at uh for me my personal walk in ministry and i'm not professing by any means to be you know saint char or any of that i'm i'm right, none of right. I have messed completely up at times, but at mm -hmm. the end of the day, I always found myself back in my prayer closet, back in his presence saying, okay, God, look, how do I get this right? And that, I, that's the only way that I can correct the wrong is to get it right with him. And that's right. where uh, um, systemically and holistically, this culture, this generation is missing it. Um, there's a huge void, a huge gap in between them and their relationship with God. There, there's a lot of what well, the prophet said and, and the pastor said, and mm -hmm. I went to the conference. Okay, none of that means a hill of beans if you did not go and hear what God said. Right, right. Yeah, I, I, I agree 100%. 
Um, and, and and as I'm listening, I'm, I'm I'm thinking at the same time, and I'm remembering um, uh, Solomon. Uh, yeah, with, with no one Solomon. It was Solomon's son Rehoboam. Um, when Solomon died, and I think that's that's in Kings. That's in First Kings. For those of you all who don't know the story, it's in First Kings, right? But Solomon died, and 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 so, uh, or actually, it was Jeroboam. I always get the bombs mixed up, Jeroboam and Rehoboam. But Jeroboam um, came to Rehoboam, who was Solomon's son, and and asked him the question. He said, "Well." You know, your father, you know, he really had us under hard labor. You know, it's, it, it, it was pretty hard serving up under your pops. Um, so can you like lighten the load a bit, little bit? And it says this really interesting thing that Ray Bond did. And I think sometimes we may miss it. But it says that first he went to the, the, the older generation, the elders uh -huh. who had served under his father and under his grandfather, David. And they gave him really good advice, really sound counsel. But then it says he went to those <laughs> that had come up with him, <laughs> his, his, his group, you know, his generation. And they said, oh, no, man, make their load heavier. And, and the result of him listening to the younger, and, and this is no slight to, to, to young folk. That's not what I'm doing. I'm setting this up for a question. But um, because he didn't do what the elders that actually had the wisdom um, instructed him, the end result ended up being the kingdom ended up being divided, right? Because he listened to, you know, the folk who, he, he, he listened to his posse, those who was going to ride with him, you know, um, and it caused a division in the kingdom. How, how important or not important do you think it is for all of us to be willing to listen to those who have gone on before us, the real elders in the body, and not dismiss them because we are hearing, oh, God's doing a new thing. That's real popular. The new thing. So, <laughs> oh my God. I, I truly, and, and a lot of people, I, I get asked this question a lot. Um, I want to say that I, I typically ride on the back of those that have gone before me. Uh, okay. You have lived and I am living. Mm -hmm. I'm just now getting in the moment. So there may be some things um, that you have experienced that you see me experiencing uh, that you can forewarn me against. Now, here's the key to that. You got to get out your feelings and your emotions because a lot of times, and I had to learn this personally, <laughs> is that uh, in ministry, a lot of times, because I have been told this not once but twice, go sit down. When you are told to sit down, that's not meant to hurt you. It ain't hating it. Ain't none of that. Oh, it's church hurt. No, it's not church hurt. It's self-preservation and it's keeping you from being destructive in the wow. end. But you have to get out of your emotions. You have to come out of your feelings and listen to that wisdom uh, because mm -hmm. wisdom has a voice. And the Bible talks about the voice of wisdom uh, yes. over and over and again. In Proverbs, you have to listen to the voice of wisdom. And, and then in order for you to listen to the voice of wisdom, you got to have, have an ear. You got to have that spiritual ear. So that, that is um, one of the things, Jesus, that I, I, I would say for me, it has been very, very, very uh, significant in my walk because if I had not had the voice of many telling me, hey, Minister Charlie, you, you, the message sounded good, but you were in error. And I'm like, what? You know, <laughs> if, if I had not listened, I would be right. in my emotions and I would cast it off. But one thing about wisdom is wisdom always points back to truth. Yes. So it's not that you're just telling me something, especially if it's coming from a Bible perspective. You're going to point me back to it in the scripture. And then again, I am one who believes that scripture interprets scripture. So when you right. show it in the word, it's like, oh, okay, I get it. I get it. 
And, and that's where I believe that this generation fails horribly at it. It's because they don't want to be told nothing. And mm-hmm. I often wrestle with this for me being a, a parent of, I don't know what generation this is, Z, X, Y, elemental, I don't know what these children <laughs> Ain't no telling. I don't yeah, ain't know no telling. they are. But I do know that a lot of what we try to instill in our girls, we have to stop and say, okay, where do we go wrong with this? Because they hear us, but they don't hear us. They listening, but mm-hmm. they ain't hearing and mm-hmm. that's, you, you know, one of the things that we always fall back on is, okay, now I see how God felt because God was telling us, all, Christ was telling us, you know, you had John the Baptist out here for a warning. You had James right. out here for a warning. You had Solomon and Elijah, Elisha out here for a warning. We, right. You know, but now it's to a point where, okay, God, I should have been listening back when they said something because now I see all of this on top of us. And that's how I I, I like to dissect um, my walk with God and, and just the whole hearing, listening, the entire bit. It's, it's um you got to have a desire and a passion for it. But more important, you got to scoot your feelings out the way. Right. Right. You got to get your feelings out the way and, and um, not take everything so personal. You know, if, if it's something that I do wrong, I, especially because I'm always looking to you and quite a few others, you know, hey, you know, Brother Darrell, what do you think? If it's mm-hmm. wrong, I'm looking to you as a pioneer. You are a forerunner. You know, Brother Darrell, tell me what, where I'm wrong. And, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. It is what it is. Right, right. But, have to have that perspective um and don't look at it like oh they just hating on me no they're not hating they helping it's a difference yeah. in hate and hindering <laughs> right like, oh that's good that's good difference and that's the, the thing that most miss and and more than i can tell you i threw out my ministerial journey most of the people that i wanted to be sour with they actually helped they actually mm-hmm. helped me um major major you know man sure you might want to tone that down or go back to the scripture read and that's one of the things that i tell people about um i like to say early bishop jake is that one of the things that he instilled in us was um reading the scripture don't just read the verse read the chapter before the chapter and the chapter right. after and get an understanding And then if you do not understand, then come back and I'll talk to you about it. You you know, it's, it's, um, everybody want to raise sons and daughters these days, but, um, yeah, I've said this, I've said this, (laughs) they're raising a whole lot of Hophni and Phineas's, they're raising a whole lot of bastards in the gospel. I said, they raised a whole bunch of bastards and and nobody wants to be told. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. Uh, well, you know I agree 100%. Uh, but but I want to ask you a question about that b- because you said it a couple of times and I, and I get totally what you're saying and I agree 100%. And because I find this to be another challenging place with a lot of people when it comes to reading the scriptures, right? And you make you made the statement, you believe scripture interprets scripture. Um, Elaborate on that a little bit for people who may not actually believe they can pick up the Bible and read it, um, that they got to have somebody read it for them and tell them what it says. So when you say scripture interprets scriptures, talk, talk about that a little bit. For me? Yes. For me, this is, uh, I want to say early on in, in my walk um, with the Bible. How did you say it? Plantation ministry? Plant, yeah, plantation preachers. Plantation preachers. Jesus <laughs> Christ, help me. A lot of it is, um, if you, if I rely solely on what Brother Daryl tells me, you could tell me that a cobra is not poisonous. Mm-hmm. I would be foolish enough to go and try to entertain a cobra because well, well, Brother Daryl said it. I didn't have enough sense to go read for myself and right. 
understand. One of the things that I do when I get into the word of God is, is before I even get, before I dive into it, God, what is it that you want me to know? I'm always, I pray before I go into the word. I ask God to unravel this. But one of the things that I am constantly doing is God make these dead letters come alive within my spirit mm. so that it means something to me. That has been my basis, my foundation for the past 15, 20 years in ministry. And, okay. and you know, it, it's, it's one of those that where when I go into the book, I can read like, for instance, I was reading um, Second Kings, I, I want to say chapter 10, with Jehu when he went to get rid of Jezebel and all of them. Right. You know, it wasn't until I read it, I was like, okay, and I'm running through here like a chicken with my head cut out. Bah! He said, you, you know, this is me, because mm -hmm. I looked at it a million times, but I never understood it until, God, hold, hold up, what are, what are you trying to tell me here? You know, I'm trying to tell you that when, when you go after your enemy, look, you're going to be able to put their heads on display. And when I tell mm. you to go after them, I want you to go after the entire squad and click. That's the type of wow. hearing and seeing and intimacy that you have to have with God in the scripture in order for the scripture to interpret the scripture. And that's the thing with, with a lot of people. I remember um, when, when we were on Periscope, I had one brother tell me uh, at the end, he said, you know, because I, I, I used to end scopes with this. I make love to the word and the word makes love to me. Yeah. If I don't love him back, he won't love me in return. So how right. do I know him if he had not come into me which is that intimacy so that I will know how to interpret. He said, well, you know, you got a lot of perverted people. Sir, wait a minute. Where is your mind? At? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not even on that period. I am not. Right. And right. That, you know, it's that type of thinking that I think is what hinders a lot of people from being able to fully and holistically mm -hmm. interpret the word of God. It, it, it's cleaning out the clutter of the mind, cleaning out the clutter of the heart. You first of all, you got to clean the foundation. You got to sweep the foundation clean, you know, so that you can go back and build up what religion has tore down, you know. Right. And that that's right. a huge thing. And then once you do that, then boom, right. it will all make sense to a point to where I, I'm not saying that we don't need you know, pastors and we don't need preachers because you're going to mm -hmm. always need those. But at the same time, they will not be able to fleece you uh, because right. you don't know enough. You don't know enough. And, and that's where I, I like to say a lot of where we are 21st century, a lot of this, this is where we are with, with ministry because everybody believes that if you sow, you'll grow. If you believe right. You know, come on now. It's bigger than that. It's bigger than right. it's bigger than a conference. It's it's bigger than running around the church. It's bigger than it's bigger than casting out whatever you got in you. It's it's bigger than all of that. It's right. Right. You have to believe it, and that's in the scriptures. If you don't believe it, it'll never happen. That's and that's Jesus, true. He met, Jesus Christ made that clear. That was evident from Genesis to Revelation. You have to believe in what you're reading. And, and that's the thing with a lot of people is, is they read it and they skim through it. They don't take the time to do, you know, uh, um, the genealogy uh, mm -hmm. to understand where they are in scripture. Okay, well, listen, Jesus was Kenny G and he came through here blowing the saxophone all through Jerusalem. No, that right. ain't what that <laughs> was. That is not. <laughs> Who told you this? <laughs> right right told you this and that's the whole thing is that a lot of people they do not take the time to read understand they just skim through they they live for the sermon and not the word of god right and and, and, and that's the thing mm -hmm. yeah that 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 really is the thing because and i know and and when i heard you say it um, I wanted you to elaborate on it, <clears throat> excuse me, because I know that's that's something that I said, you know, I 
I say it all of the time, you know, and, and I think sometimes, you know, I don't know what people think when I say it, but that, you know, the scripture will interpret the scripture. It's, it's, it's not rocket science, you know, it's, it's not putting a jigsaw was, it is kind of like putting a jigsaw puzzle to go, but you know, like with any jigsaw puzzle, you got the box that it came in. So just sit the box there and replicate what you see. So if you want to, so if you want to know what it should look like to follow Jesus, you, you you got Jesus in the book. Just look at his life, and then you'll know, right? Um, but and and a lot of times I think when I say it, people say, "Well, of course you would say that you've been saved X amount of years, you've been in ministry X amount of years, you know, you got a seminary degree, you know." But I'm just, you know, you know, I just got saved, right? And I'm like, folks. There was a time I just got saved. <laughs> I wasn't born. I wasn't born saved. You know, uh, you know, shock, that might be a shocker to a lot of people to think none of us were born saved. Even if you were born in America, that don't mean you was born saved. Mm -hmm. All right. But, you know, and I tell people, you can, you can literally pick up your Bible, pray, and the same spirit that inspired the writers of the scripture will give you an understanding of what they wrote. I mean, it it really is, I mean, I hate to make it sound as simple, but it really is kind of simple because God know we ain't that bright, uh -huh. <laughs> right? Uh -huh. He know we not that bright. So he made it as simple as possible. And and, and so you, you, you would say anybody can really pick up the scriptures and, and pray and read and God will open up the word to them and, they don't have to flips and do hurdles and all of that. You you really believe that? I, I do. Okay. I do. I do. I do. It, but then, you know what? It's kind of like in corporate America when you say a skill over will. Uh, you you got to have a desire to want to do it. Um, and, and if the desire is not there, then you will never, ever, you know, have that in you to, to do that. Um, one of the things, and and I'm I might butcher this. Um, I'm I'm trying to because I was trying to think of uh, how did Bishop Jake uh, he worded this to us, and and it was one of the things that I want to say may have uh, stuck with me when I I came out um, of of the school of ministry, and it was one of the things because you know he 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 told us you know I refuse to. One, oh my God, Jesus. One of the things that he said to us, and he mentioned this so often in, in uh, sermons, uh, Sunday sermon, I refuse to pastor an ignorant church. Mm. And I said, God, I don't want to be ignorant. What does that That's mean? Powerful. I refuse to pastor. And, and, you know, he said at the end of the day, it, it's something much greater than running around the church and Puck a bucking and speaking in tongue and all of that. When we got in, and uh, when I went through the school of ministry, because I started and then I dropped, and then I went because I started up under when Rita Twiggs was there, and she was a powerful, powerful woman of God. Went back, and then I ended up finishing. But it was uh, uh, four principles that he told us about uh, that it, it, it resonated in my spirit even to today. It was study yourself full, think yourself clear, uh, pray yourself hot, and then let yourself go. Mm. That was the most powerful thing that I absolutely believe that he could have ever poured into us as students, you know, uh, coming up in this. And I said, now, nah, he don't even realize what he did. You know, you don't even have to sit at his feet for nothing else. You, you just got the whole thing right there yeah yeah and that is what a lot of 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 uh new converts and disciples they miss out on study yourself study yourself hot and mm -hmm. and i truly believe that when, when i look back at scripture interpret scripture i can easily go back to genesis 1 he made us in his image. So right. when I 
study the scripture, not only am I seeing him, I see me. I see the Come David on. in me. I see the Rahab in me. I see the Jehu. I see the Jeroboam. So I see all of these people on the inside of me. And from there, I am able to fill this forward and out to everybody else. This is the powerful. why, you know, you're going through this season in life. This is what, you know, and, and most don't take it that realm. They don't take a yes. place that you, give me $1,400 and I'll pray for you. I ain't got <laughs> I ain't had, I ain't, I put something on it though. Listen, give me $1,400 <laughs> and I'm going to pray for you. I, yeah, wish, I wish I had the gall to do what a lot of these people, are. you know, I call them cats. I, know. I wish, I, wish yeah. I had the gall to do what a lot of these cats are out here in ministry doing uh, uh, because it's a lot. It's it's way too much. And, um, and uh, my heart bleeds for people that fall for it. Uh, it, it, I really do. I really do because I'm like it doesn't take all that, and and I'm waiting on you. You know, it, it's a lot of um, misinterpret misinterpretation of the scripture. You know, yeah, if I'm a taking bunch. care of you, yeah, if I'm taking care of you, you take care of me to the tune of fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars. I don't even have. Right. Yeah. Listen, listen I'm my like, mortgage, look. my mortgage dude. What are y'all doing around here? <laughs> <laughs> I, got a whole, is, I got a whole car note mortgage. I got look uh, uh, an animal down here at my feet. I ain't got time for that. Y'all right. fourteen hundred dollars right. to pray? No, you are not praying. You are p r e y praying on my wallet. Exactly. That, that, that's what's going on. That exactly. And 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 folks, that's the thing that I hope that you um that you walk away with um from this conversation is is really knowing you you can have a personal and i emphasize personal personal relationship with the lord he's he's not dead i mean that's that's the great thing about about the god that we that that we follow um he's not dead you know he he, he still communicates with his people um but but like minister child pointed out you know you have to have an ear to hear um and so i just want to encourage you um to pursue him you know not don't don't pursue his hand pursue his heart mm -hmm. if you pursue his heart you got his hand, you know, um, and so just be encouraged with wherever you are. And Minister Chow, if if the people want to um, get in contact with you or follow you, I want you to give your I want you to give your telephone number out over here because everybody be calling you. Could you pray for me? <laughs> but 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 where can where where, where can the uh, the listeners find you? Listen, I'm gonna tell you the whole telephone thing. Some crazy people out here. Jesus Christ help them. Because I have had some Jesus Christ um, that reach out, and I don't know how they managed to get this much information off of a handle, but y'all love some crafty snakes out here. So right, right. I tell you, um, I can be reached minute with the minister, www.minutewiththeminister, one whole word.com. That is my personal website. Uh, I'm also on Facebook under that name and then um, on uh, Instagram as well under Minister Cha if you want to uh, reach out to me. And uh, okay. I'm always available on uh, email. It is evangelistcha777. I believe that may be it. Um, and just reach out to me. Reach out to me. I'm always, I make myself available. I'm, I'm up all hours of the night. Um, typically between midnight and three praying. And uh, if you do need prayer, I am here for that. If you need conversation, I am here for that. You know, as long as it's Bible. Don't come before you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you got to... <laughs> So nowadays, you know, nowadays you gotta you you gotta do that, you know, because I, you know, I've had some emails and calls, and I'm like, hey, I think you got the, I think you got the wrong idea. I'm about to cast something out, but um, listen, listen, we're about to have a full blown <laughs> deliverance ministry around here. What is on the inside of you, Jesus? 
what manner, <laughs> right. of, look, what manner of evil is this, Lord? Yes. Listen, is this is this you or is this be as above? Yeah, I can't tell. No. Exactly. I, I, I am I am here for it. Uh and, and I love nothing more than to pour into the people. Uh again, I am here um just to, to enlighten, uh, but more importantly, to break a lot of the religious mindsets uh, that we have been indoctrinated with over the years, uh, depending on where you are, because I, I do truly believe that that has been the crutch and the pit uh, that a lot of us have fallen into. So if you are uh, in need, just reach out to me. Amen. And her, her information is on the screen. It's also in the description. So you have no excuse. Um, so, you know, say, well, hey, uh, I missed it when it was, uh, you know, when it was on the screen. Just check the description of this conversation is, is in there as well. And I'm actually going to put her on the spot because, see, I keep telling her she needs to do more social media on some other platforms, right? And she keeps saying, I know, Brother Daryl, I'm going to, I'm going to. So, you know, I'm going I'm to put her on the stop on the spot because you know you know she got an open invitation to come back and uh you always know she's not gonna get away from it so as he always does you know i, I would tell people holistically don't nobody <laughs> pick on me more than than brother <laughs> and and i'm look i'm i'm doing better i'm doing better like i i can say i'm honestly uh i'm truly humbled with the uh growth that i have seen on facebook uh because to me that is the toughest market that you can uh break it's a tough one come. it's a tough one and i can tell you uh they send you this 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 uh, uh it's a page performance and i have grown 667 percent within the past That's great. month so I, I give all of that all glory be to god um but again i say what he tell me to say if you come on there with some foolishness if my wig ain't tight i might go off on it <laughs> <laughs> make the wig tight. Um, because I, I might go it. off on you. Uh, but I love for, it. But for the most part, I, I, I all glory goes to God. Uh, because I'm I'm out here. I'm doing what He's telling me to do, and and that is promoting truth. Yes. Truth. Truth. Um, it, it's it's not about how I feel. It's about how He feels, and I truly believe in kingdom over culture. I truly believe in that. Amen. Truth first. Truth first. All right. And and I want to thank you for your time this evening and tell Mike I said thanks <laughs> for, for for allowing allowing me to pull you away for just a couple of moments Jesus. to share with the focus. <laughs> yes, amen. Well, before we close, I, I want to say to the listeners again, I, I truly, well, I'm not going to say I hope you got something because I know that you did. Um, but I do want to challenge you to, now that you've heard it, apply it. And watch how God, you know, watch how God moves in your life. And again, um, be sure to like, share, subscribe um, the broadcast. I'm going to be doing more conversations of this nature um, in addition to a lot of the teaching that I'm doing, because I do believe that we are in times of restoration um, and God is speaking some things. He's unrolling the scroll and he's calling us to a, to a place of accountability. So again, I wanna thank all of you all for your love, your support and your prayers uh, for what I'm doing on social media. And on that note, Minister Chai, do you have any last words you wanna share with the folks? I, I actually do, and I'm gonna circle back to this. And I don't know why I brought this up, but it hit my spirit again. And, and again, this is, um, one some of the stuff that brought me through to where I am and and again I'm piggybacking off of a, a great pioneer two pioneers uh one being you yourself uh which is um hey don't get mad get free get that free has, that has blessed me tremendously <laughs> over the past two years and then from that it is the study yourself full Get in the word of God and eat it until you are regurgitating uh, the word of God. But think yourself clear. And, and that is whatever it is that you had been embedded on uh, 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 from foundation, uh, religion, 
religion, and, and that's a huge hindrance for a lot of us. Clear that out. That's clutter. Yeah. Pray yourself hot. Get into the presence of God and pray until you feel him in you and you in him. And then just let yourself go. Uh, that, that is what I want to leave with everybody because that has truly been, uh, these have been hallmarks for me over the past couple of years, 20 years, and then the two to three that I've known you. Uh, it is don't get mad, get free. And then those four tips. Amen. Well, again, everybody and Minister Child, thank you so much. You hang on for a minute after we close. And uh, <laughs> everybody, again, thanks for your time. Um, we'll talk to you next time. If you have any questions, comments, um, you need prayer, all of our information is included in the description of the broadcast. Be sure to hit us up. We'll be sure to respond at our earliest opportunity. Amen. Amen. Y'all stay blessed.